All right, we've been uh, discussing the altar of incense. <clears throat> we want to see it um, in light of the fulfillment. Um, we want to see it in light of the New Testament. We want to see it in light of Christ. We want to see it in light of his body, still yet him fulfilling it in us um, and bringing what God had in mind when he uh, set up all of that because he met on top of a tall mountain with Moses and showed him the pattern in the mount. But then the tabernacle was set up and God was right there in the midst of the people. <clears throat> the question is what God or what kind of God and one of the things that we notice in the tabernacle from our chart and just in general of any study is that there are two altars which we've discussed, the brazen altar, and we are yet discussing the altar of incense. And we're finding out I don't guess I don't guess I can say we're finding out. I can say that um, because I can share certain things and some people will just be blown away and some people just not see anything. <laughs> so I can't say we're finding out for sure, but we're here to find out. How about that? <laughs> we are here together to find out. Amen? Together to find out. <clears throat> The things of the Lord's heart that he had in mind before there was a tabernacle and long before we were the temple of God so that we can align ourselves with heart and vision of God, with heart and vision. So um, uh, I have a statement here. As an altar, the altar of incense, primar its primary purpose was still sacrifice. And we'll get into that. We'll show that. We'll show how that's carried out. But just to point out, altars, altars are God's way. They are his way. They're his way. In fact, I wrote down here somewhere, altars, they are the foundation of how he thinks and operates. And the primary basis upon he wants to relate to us. Okay, so if that's true now, <clears throat> then um, we should be able to see that in the New Testament. So you can, if you, if you will, turn with me to Luke chapter 9 and verse 22 through 24. <clears throat> Luke 9, 22 through 24. <clears throat> This is Jesus speaking here in Luke 9, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain. So he's going to suffer many things. He's going to be rejected. He's going to be slain and be raised the third day. And he said unto them all, If, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same will save it. So here we have take up your cross daily. We have that in light of Jesus first. It's, it's almost like, um, I'll just, how about this? I'll liken it to Jesus being the brazen altar because that's what he's speaking of. The Son of Man must suffer and he must be rejected and, and uh, be slain. Um, he is likened unto the brazen altars, but we are to take coals and fire from that altar and become the altar of incense that, that gives the fragrance of that to people. 
However, it is a fragrance of life unto life or death unto death, depending on the, the person. <clears throat> so he says all that, and then he immediately follows, and, and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, deny himself. Not just come after me, but deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. So he says, take up the cross daily. And so here you have the, the, the uh, burn offering that was offered daily, twice daily. And you have the altar of incense that was burned daily. Perpetual, perpetual is the idea. Now, if the, if the priests have to go in and throw another sacrifice on the, on the barbie, uh, and, uh, you know, then, then in a sense it's not perpetual, but Jesus' self-giving is perpetual, see. And so um, I have other scriptures here, but, you know, there's just a reality. I was thinking about this, I mean, just, just before we got in the car and left, I was thinking about this and how, you know, there is no way, there is no way that I can explain not even the things I've seen, which is just a pittance. There's no way that I can explain that to you in a way that you will get it. There isn't. There isn't. There's no way that I can do that. And therefore, some get it and some don't, or some see it. <clears throat> but that's the work of the Lord. That's not my work. My work, yes, is to declare. But, um, and I was thinking about that, and this, and I, I think I barely turned and just read the scriptures real quick. Um, wasn't even thinking about it in relationship to this class, but it was over in John 20. And, um, and I was thinking of a, in relationship to uh, getting it, in, in relationship to understanding the death uh, and the reality of Christ, the death and the burial and the resurrection, or more specifically, the process by which his life goes through because he, he you know, he's, his life is the only one that comes forth out of death. So it's a process of his life. It's not just death, burial, and resurrection because that could make an, an event. And, and, and understanding an event, no matter how much we comprehend it, does not reveal the living God. It doesn't. It doesn't. Um, it, it, at best, at best, it will open our eyes to scriptures or, you know, open our eyes to um, uh, truths attached to it. Death, when his is not just death, but his is self-giving and loss um, that others may gain. And, um, and burial is not some ethereal thing. It is going down into that death to the degree that you're covered over not to be seen or smelled. And, uh, and, and so, you know, we hear things. We hear things. I mean, this has, been, this has been my whole life. I mean, I was, you know, my whole Christian life, basically, <laughs> preaching Christ and Him crucified. And uh, so we hear things and, and we go, well, you know, oh, that's good. Or we hear something of the truth and we say, oh, that's, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. Or we hear something. And one of the reasons why it's so difficult is because fear of death, fear of death. That we have a fear of death instead of an understanding of Christ's death. And we, we equate them as the same thing and they're not. See, they're not. They're not. And there has to be a reality of revelation of Christ in that for it to become anything. Anyway, so I, was looking, I, I just was thinking of these scriptures in verse 19. This is John 20. And the same day at even, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Okay, so here they are. What did they believe of, and they'd heard Jesus talk about going into death many times. I mean, it can't be a subject. It can't be a subject of discussion. It can't be a, a viewpoint of a, uh, 
maestro, a master, a, a rabbi, a man of God. It can't be a, a subject of discussion. And if it is, then you're going to end up behind closed doors afraid that there are things inside of us that will close ourselves off to the truth of Christ and him crucified. There are. And we can do that for years and years and years and years and years because we, we um, part of it is we don't understand that death. Because, and here's what I mean by that, if we don't understand that death, then we don't understand that burial. And if we don't understand that death, we don't understand the burial that leads to resurrection. And if we don't understand the death, we don't understand the burial and the meaning of the resurrection being Christ coming forth, not just he's alive in heaven. He was raised and he's alive. Not just he's alive, but he literally is the way. cross Christ crucified the lamb is the way the altar is the way and the truth is you've got to be buried and your stinking deadness be put away but you don't smell yourself <laughs> and then the life and then the life and then the life and it's a process of of his life and it is indefinable by words except if our goal is simply words so so here they are they've got their fears and that's 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 natural and it's normal but it's unacceptable with the lord okay so it's it's excusable among men because we all understand it amen we understand closing off and going, I don't know about that part. You know, I mean, it looked pretty bad to me as we were, you know, of course, only John could say that because everybody else ran away. But I mean, it looked bad. You know what I mean? It looked like a bad situation and everybody seems to be upset with us now, you know, and they're locked in there because they went, they killed Jesus and I bet you they're going to come to kill us. I, in other words, he was put to death, and we're probably going to be put to death. At least they understood that much. But I think we do, too. <laughs> we're the ones who lock the doors. Okay? So, uh, the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. In other words, they weren't seeking God. Okay, now listen, listen. Because... Just because you don't believe doesn't mean you're, that Jesus isn't going to come. I'll explain that as we go, or the scriptures will. Came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Not, um, you guys, you shouldn't be afraid. You shouldn't be have me locked out, you know, because... I come through doors, <laughs> and, I, and, I also, and I also break through hearts, you know, and it's not that difficult for me. You're the difficult ones, because they're trembling, you know, and they're afraid of death, and they're afraid of where all of this is going to lead. This swirling and thoughts and, you know, and then hearing something said and go, oh, no, and interpreting that in light of your fears instead of in light of God's heart. Mm -hmm. Ooh, folks, I'm telling you, that's not good. That's not good. When we fear, when we wonder, when we feel a wall going up at something that's said or whatever, you know, whether it's here or anywhere, the first thing we should do is pray a little prayer. Lord, I don't want walls trying to keep you out. But here's the rest of the prayer. But Lord, come on in. Come on in. Can we pray that right now? Yes. Lord, we don't want to put up walls that try to keep you out. You who was crucified. Not just you who we walked with for all these years, but you who was crucified trying to keep you out. But we 
want you to come in. In Jesus' name, come in, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, so, so then, and, and his attitude, peace. Peace, you know, peace be unto you. Don't worry about your fears. There's something else going on here, okay? So then, verse 20, and when he had said so, he showed them his hands and his side. Okay, so he's saying, look at me. I'm Christ crucified, and I'm alive in the midst of you. Well, could we have Jesus of Nazareth back? No. But I want you to examine the results. I want you to ex understand that this death is not unto death where it's, there's never anything out of it. There is a life, but the life that came forth is Christ crucified. See my hands? See my sides? This is the life. This is what this is. But I'm alive, and I'm alive in the midst of you. Okay, so we, we get a pretty good reaction here. Uh, then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said uh, this, uh, he breathed on them, and he saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Let's just see that, because they're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let's just receive that as receiving the no longer just God breathed life and they were made a living soul, but the life of the crucified breathing into them. That's better than any class. That's better than any teaching. It's better than any book I've ever read. That's the Jesus I want, the one that breathes away the fears and the walls and the stuff that holds everything back. Okay? And then um, down in verse uh, 24, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. And was not with them when Jesus came. He wasn't there. So, let's see what it, what, what it says here. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. We've seen the crucified. And not only that, but he breathed in us. But he said unto them, Except I, and here's, here's Thomas, he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of, his, uh, into the, print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. I will not believe. I will not believe unless I see Christ crucified. Amen. Now, we always put down Thomas, but I got news for you. They didn't believe either until they saw Christ crucified. We act as if they believed and he didn't. He's the only one. They didn't believe either. Jesus had to show up for them and show him the crucified just like Thomas. Amen? You know, we go, we go oh, Thomas must have been the worst. <laughs> he could go, look, boys, you didn't believe either till he walked through your walls. At least I ain't got any walls, you know. <laughs> Actually, he did, and his wall was, I will not believe. I will not believe. Okay, that's not the end of it. I don't care how much you stick your finger in the face of God or the little hand inside behind your walls going, I will not believe the cross. I will not believe that sentence. I will not believe about that. I will not. I'm going to hold on to Jesus of Nazareth, and he's going to do miracles and bless me and take care of every portion of me, and I'm going to stick with that. I will not believe. No. Tough. Here he comes. Verse 26. And after eight days, again, his disciples were inside. <laughs> well. And Thomas with them. Then came Jesus. Folks, that's it. Then came Jesus. Then Jesus came. Not the message, not the teaching, not the trying to get it or trying to get it but secretly trying to reject it. <laughs> yes. 
and not willing to face that you're rejecting, then came Jesus. And that's it. That's the end of it now. When Jesus comes, see, when it's the crucified comes, what argument do you have? When he reveals himself to you, what argument do you have? You have no argument. You fall down like he said, and he said, my Lord and my God. That's what he did. Because there was a seeing of the crucified who was slain but is alive because the crucified is alive. Because the lamb still lives to be the lamb. And he's, he goes, he's saying, basically, you guys are my body. You're my body. Okay. Now you can see, Thomas was the great example. You can resist it when somebody's telling you their experience. You can resist it when somebody's teaching you. Well, I don't care if you resist what I got to say or not. Uh, no, I do care, but I don't care enough that it's like, you know, I'm not going to say to you, peace. You know, what was the exact words? Uh, peace be unto you. Because it, there's, there's no problem if we all see Jesus. <laughs> there's no problem if then comes Jesus. And then you go, Jesus came. Look, I saw the crucified. I saw the reality. I saw the hope. I saw what, what was supposed to be Christ in me. I saw that it was the crucified, not Jesus of Nazareth. And it changed everything. I mean, the others didn't fall down and say, my Lord and my God. Hallelujah. Thomas had the same experience, but he had his own experience. He had his own reality of Christ crucified so that he didn't have to say, well, Peter saw this and I'm telling you he's taught me and here's what he's told me and it's good. You know, well, that doesn't hold up under cross examination. The only thing that holds up is then came Jesus. So yeah, I, you do realize I could just keep rolling, but we're going to stop. We're going to stop and you're going to pray instead of mill around and you're going to you're going to ask God for the reality of coming through your walls and of in even if in the face of you saying to him I will not believe he's coming all right a little bit of prayer time